ಸವಿತೂರ್ವರೇಣ್ಯಂ ಭೃಗೋದೇವಶಧೀಮಹಿ ಧಿಯೋ ನಃ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋ ಆನ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮನ ಮಹರ್ಷೀಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಓನ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ continuing from videos number 9 and 10 the topic is realization now i start uh, video number 10 devotee ask a question can we think without the mind bhagwan ram naam maharshi replies thoughts can continue like other activities they do not disturb the supreme consciousness people surmise the existence of the pure mind in the jivan mukta and the personal god they ask how he could otherwise live and act but this is only a concession to argument the pure mind is in fact absolute consciousness the object to be witnessed and the witness finally merge together and the absolute consciousness alone remains it is not a state of blank or ignorance but it is the supreme self the mind of the realized man is sometimes compared to the moon in daytime the moon shines by reflecting the light of the sun when the sun has set the moon is useful for displaying objects when the sun has risen no one needs the moon although its disk is visible in the sky so it is with the mind and the heart the mind is made useful by its reflected light it is used for seeing objects when turned inwards it merges into the source of illumination which shines by itself and the mind is then like the moon in day time sometimes people expressed fear at the thought of giving up the ego but bhagwan reminded them that they do so every time they go to sleep people are afraid that when the ego or the mind is killed the result may be a mere blank and no happiness what a, what really happiness is that the thinker the object of the thought and thinking all merge in the one source which is consciousness and bliss itself and thus that state is neither inert nor blank i do not understand why people should be afraid of a state in which all thoughts cease to exist and the mind is killed they daily experience it in sleep there is no mind or thought in sleep yet when one rises from sleep one says i slept well moreover in the sleep the surrender the ego moreover in sleep they surrender the ego in order to lapse into a mere blank whereas realization is merging into pure consciousness which is the uttermost bliss in answer to a visitor bhagwan made the following remark you can have or rather you will yourself be the highest imaginable kind of happiness all other kinds of happiness which you have spoken of as pleasure joy happiness bliss are only reflections of the ananda which in your true nature you are it is impossible to describe samadhi since it is <coughs> since it transcends the mind it can only be experienced an american lady asked bhagwan what his experiences of samadhi were when it was suggested that she should relate her experiences and ask if they were right she replied that sri bhagwan's experiences are to be correct and should be known whereas her own were unimportant she wanted to know whether sri bhagwan felt his body hot or cold in samadhi whether he spent the first 3 and a half years of his stay in 
त्रिवनम लाई इन प्रेयर एंड सोन भगवान समाधि ट्रांसेंड्स माइंड एंड स्पीच एंड कैन नॉट बी डिस्क्राइब्ड द स्टेट ऑफ डीप स्लीप कैन नॉट बी डिस्क्राइब्ड द स्टेट ऑफ समाधि इवन लेस डिवोटी बट आई नो दैट आई वाज अनकॉन्शियस इन डीप स्लीप भगवान कॉन्शियसनेस एंड अनकॉन्शियसनेस आर मोड्स ऑफ द माइंड समाधि ट्रांसेंड्स द माइंड devotee still you can tell me what it is like bhagwan you will know only when you are in samadhi sometimes he refer to the cinema screen as an illustration devotee if the realized and the unrealized alike perceive the world where is the difference between them bhagwan when the realized man sees the world he sees the self that is the substratum of all that is seen whether the unrealized man sees the world or not he is ignorant of his true being the self take the example of a film on a cinema screen what is there in front of you before the film begins only the screen on that screen you see the entire show and to all appearances the pictures are real but go and try to take hold of them and what do you take hold of the screen on which the pictures appear so real after the play when the pictures disappear what remains the screen again so it is with the self that alone exists the pictures come and go if you hold on to the self you will not be deceived by the appearance of the pictures nor does it matter at all whether the pictures appear or disappear once permanent unwavering sahaja samadhi has been obtained this is the state of mukti or liberation people speak of jivan mukti and videha mukti that is liberation while still living and liberation after that but bhagwan explained that the difference is only from the point of view of the observer to the realized man himself it makes no difference whether he wears a body or not mr benerji asked bhagwan what is the difference between jivan mukti and videha mukti bhagwan there is no difference for those who ask it is said that a realized man with a body is a jivan mukta and that he attains videha mukti when he sets the body but this difference exists only for the onlooker not for him his state is the same before shedding the body and after we think of him as a human form or as in that form but he knows that he is the self the one reality both inner and outer which is not bound by any form there is a verse in the bhagavata bhagwan here quoted the verse in tamil which says that just as a drunk just as a drunken man does not notice whether he is wearing his shawl or whether it has fallen off so the realized man is hardly aware of his body and it makes no difference to him whether it remains or drops off there are no stages in realization or mukti there are no degrees of liberation so there cannot be one stage of liberation with the body and another when the body has been shed the realized man knows that he is the self and that nothing neither his body nor anything else exists but the self to such a one what difference could the presence or absence of body a body make sometimes the realization is called turiya the fourth state because it underlies the three states of waking dream and deep sleep when i entered the hall bhagwan was answering some questions and was saying there is no difference between the dream and waking state except that former is short and the later long both are the product of the mind because the waking state last longer we imagine it to be our real state but actually our real state is what is sometimes called the fourth state which is always as it is and is unaffected by waking dream or sleep because we call these three states we call 
in that state also however it is really just the natural state of the self a fourth state would imply sometime relative whereas this is transcendent in truth there is no boundaries our real nature is liberation but we imagine that we are bound and we make a strenuous effort to get free although all the while we are free this is understood only when we reach that state then we shall be surprised to find that we were frantically striving to attain something that we always were and are an illustration while make this we will make this clear a man goes to sleep in this hall he dreams he has gone on a world tour and he is traveling over hill and dale forest and plain desert and sea across various continents and after many years of weary and strenuous travel he returns to this country reaches trivanamalai enters the ashram and walks into the hall just at that moment he wakes up and finds that he has not moved at all but has been sleeping where he lay down he has not returned after great efforts to this hall but was there all the time it is exactly like that it is asked why being free we imagine ourselves bound i answer why being in the hall did you imagine you were on a world tour crossing hill and dale desert and sea it is all mind or maya under whatever name and form one may worship the absolute reality it is only a means for realizing it which is without name and form that alone is true realization wherein one knows oneself in relation to that reality attains the peace and realizes one's identity with it ninth the duality of subject and object the trinity of seer sight and seen can exist only if supported by the one if one turns in words in search of other that one reality they fall away those who see this are those who see wisdom they are never in doubt 21 what is the truth of the scriptures which declare that if one sees the self one sees god how can one see one's self if one if since there is a single being one cannot see one's self how can one see god only by becoming a prey to him 22 the divine the divine gives light to the mind and signs within it except by turning the mind inward and fixing it in the divine there is no other way to know him through the mind 30 if one inquires who am i within the mind the individual i falls down abashed as soon as one reaches the heart and immediately reality manifests itself spontaneously as i i although it reveals itself as the i it is not the ego but the perfect being the absolute self 31 for him who is immersed in the bliss of the self arising from the extinction of the ego what remains to be accomplished he is not aware of anything other than the self who can comprehend this state 32 although the scriptures proclaim thou art that is only a sign of weakness of mind to meditate i am that not this because you are eternally that what has to be done is to investigate what real one really is and remain as that 33 it is ridiculous either to say i have not realized the self or i have realized the self are there two selves for one to be the object of the other's realization it is a truth within the experience of everyone that there is only one self 34 it is due to illusion born of ignorance that man fail to recognize that which is always and for everybody the inherent reality dwelling in in its natural heart center and to abide in it and that instead they argue that it exists or it does not exist 
but it has form or does not have form or is non-dual or dual. 35. To seek and abide in the reality that is always attained is the only attainment. All other attainments, siddhis, are such as are acquired in dreams. Can they that can they that are established in the reality and are free from Maya be deluded by them? 38. As long as a man is the doer, he also reaps the fruits of his deeds. But as soon as he realizes the self through inquiry as to who is the doer, his sense of being the doer falls away and the triple karma is ended. This is the state of eternal liberation. 30. Nine. Only so long as one considers oneself bound, do thoughts of bondage and liberation continue. When one inquires who is bound, the self is realized, eternally attained, eternally free. When thoughts of bondage come to an end, can thoughts of liberation survive? 40. If it is said that liberation is of three kinds with form, without form, or with and without form, then let me tell you that the extinction of the ego that asks which form of liberation is true is the only true liberation. So here ends the Teachings of Sri Bhagwan in his own words. So thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Thanks a lot. Namaskar. My dear friends. Namaskar. Namaskar.